brothers and sisters, all of our friends in Christ with us here in the sanctuary tonight, God bless you. Would you all stand together and we welcome all those that are joining us by way of the web. We're all gathering together in one accord, in one place to worship our mighty Savior. Praise God. His name is Jesus and he is worthy of our worship. We are living in, in uh, the Bible calls troublous times in Revelation chapter number 9. It says that the bottomless pit was opened and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke that came out of the pit. It's not going to be easy to see your way. Things are going to be blurred. Things are going to be uncertain and unsure. But I want you to listen to this. In John chapter number 10, Jesus, and it says, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Ladies and gentlemen, we may not be able to see too good because of what is happening in this world, but we know the shepherd's voice. Praise God, and we've got a great shepherd, and we can follow him surely, and we can be confident where he's leading us because he's going before us. He's not going to take us anywhere that he hasn't been himself. What a great Savior we serve tonight. Shall we lift our hands and love him? Let's worship him as God tonight. Come on, let's worship him as God. He is our mighty Savior, our Lord, and our King, and he is worthy of our worship tonight. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we've come to lift you up and praise you. Thank you for your goodness. Praise God. Worship with our singers tonight.
Jesus. Thank you for the overflow.
Praise God. Let's worship him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe we just stepped into the throne room of God tonight. Hallelujah. Let's lift up his name. Let's worship him. Thank you, Lord. Lord God Almighty, thank you, Jesus. We love you tonight. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We lift up your name. God, we worship you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God Almighty, that you are. We worship you. We lift up your name. We praise you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, praise team. I believe they have took, taken us into the throne room of God tonight. Hallelujah. I like what I feel. The presence of God is here. His ears are open. His eyes are open because we have praised him. And his spirit has come down and filled this house tonight. Hallelujah. If you're here with a need tonight, if you're watching by the way of the, of the, way of the web and you have a need, praise God. We serve a God that's able. We serve Lord God Almighty. Jesus said, I have all power in heaven and in earth. There is nothing too hard for our God. We serve a God tonight that cares. Hallelujah. If you have a need tonight, as they put the needs up on the board, we're going to ask you just to lift that need up to him. Take that other hand and lift it to him. And let's just take these needs and lift to him tonight because God is able and he can do above and beyond. We can ask or think. Yes, Lord, we bring our needs to you tonight. We thank you for your presence, God, that has filled this house. God, we know that you're listening. God, we know your eyes are open. Hallelujah. You care and you understand. Hallelujah. Oh, God, if there's any sick here tonight, you are the healer. God, if there's problems here tonight, you are the problem solver, Lord. We thank you for your power, God, and we can trust in you. Hallelujah. We love you tonight, Jesus. Thank you, God, for all that you have done. God, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory tonight in this house. Let's give him a hand clap of praise for what he has done in his house tonight. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. We welcome you to Eagle Bend Apostolic Church this evening. Welcome all of our guests and those joining us by way of the web. Can we give our guests a good hand tonight? Again, we welcome you this evening. I'm going to let you be seated just for a moment. I'm going to ask our ushers to go ahead and prepare. Amen. We hope to see everyone this coming Wednesday night for Bible study as well as our classes at 7 p.m. Um, one, one, I guess, kind of a last but also unique announcement, uh, something we've never done before. But we have Easter Sunday coming up in a couple weeks. And we're wanting to do something special in our service. Some of you have probably seen these at some point, be online or, or another church has done them, but they're called cardboard testimonies. If you, if you know what I'm talking about, raise your hand. A few of you, that's what I figured I'd get. So it, essentially what this is is where somebody would, would come up with a poster board or a piece of cardboard, hence cardboard testimony. And on one side it has something written as far as what what maybe who they were before or what a struggle or a disease or something um, of which they needed God's help for. And uh, then you flip, the, flip it to the other side and it's a testimony of how God healed or how God saved. Has anyone, has God ever done anything for anybody here tonight? Amen. I think every person in this room can raise your hand and say that I, I have a testimony of something that God healed me, that God did for me. And so we're wanting to, and then this, this is a powerful testimony and witness tool and and what I'm asking is anyone that would be willing to share that testimony and you don't have to you don't have to hold a microphone you don't have to say anything all I would ask is that you maybe would be willing to carry a, a piece of cardboard or a poster up here that, on this platform and allow people to read one side flip it and read the other and then you'd be able to exit just about as quickly as you can get up here and um and we're wanting to do this on Easter Sunday. I didn't announce it this morning because I wanted to. This is usually, usually just mostly home phone call on Sunday night. And uh, this is something I, I, would, I would ask you to, to consider that if God has done anything for you, that you'd be willing to participate with this. Um, we're not going to force people to do this. But if you would like to, we would love for you to do so. And so if we have a two weeks before this uh, 
is to take place. And so that doesn't give us a tremendous amount of time to prepare. So if, if you would be willing to do this, what I would ask is that you would let either me or Sister Amy Clavo uh, know this evening or at any point this week, uh, it, but preferably as soon as you can, just let us know that, hey, I'd be willing to do that. I'd, I want to be a part of that. And uh, I don't care if every single person in this room wants to be a part of it. We'll, we'll get you a part of it. And so I would, I would love for as many people that would be willing to share their testimony. Because you say, why are we doing this? Well, on Resurrection Sunday, we usually have a tremendous amount of guests. Guests that bring in problems and hurts and things that they've brought in here with them. And you never know who might be sitting in here that would be touched by your testimony. A testimony that no one else has but you. And it may just be by you being willing, I talked this morning just for a moment about Pastor and Sister Triplett, how they were willing to answer that call and the lives that have been touched since. If you'd be willing to stand up here and just for a few moments hold up your testimony, you never know the impact that may have on some soul's life. And so I'm asking if you'd be willing once again to either let me or Sister Amy know as quickly as possible. Because we want to we want to allow others to see how we have been changed by Jesus. Have you been changed this evening? Amen. I've been changed and I want others to know that he can change them as well. And so as always, you can find everything that we announce and more on our connect form or via our mobile app. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask Brother Caden if he'll come up here with me. This is this fine young man's growing. I looked back there a while ago and he was almost as tall as Sister Dawn now. And so he's, he's growing like a weed. Amen. I'm going to ask him if you would lift your hand and we'll, let's pray together. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given back to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today under your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You brought on me such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family is saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great job, Kate. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. We invite you to march and give your tithe and offering this evening under the direction of Russers as the music plays at this time. giving this evening before we get to the word this evening I actually want to ask my, my father to make his way um, sister Brooke approached him this weekend about singing and I love to hear my father sing I don't get to that pleasure much anymore but I'm thankful whenever I can get him up here to, he's willing to sing and so he's going to come at this time and if y'all would why don't we give him him and the Lord a good hand as he comes this evening Well, it's good to be in Tennessee, and uh, Eagle being Apostolic Church, <laughs> we, we feel right at home here. We love coming every chance we get, and uh, I enjoyed the Brother Triplett this morning. He, he did an awesome job bringing the word to us. 
love and appreciate y'all's people so much. And, uh, Sister Brooke asked me to sing yesterday, and we started naming songs, and she didn't know any of them really. But uh, <laughs> and I, I said, well, that's the only problem about singing old songs is everybody's gonna think I'm old. But uh, but uh, Brother Triplett said this morning that, that, that he didn't know any new songs, but I do know some new songs, and I sing new songs. You know, songs that were written in the '70s and '80s. But uh, she didn't know those either. So, <laughs> but. <laughs> But, but there is an old song that uh, I mentioned and she recognized. And uh, I looked it up after I talked to you yesterday. It was written in 1923. It's 99 years old. And the reason this song is still sung today is because it's true. It's great as thy faithfulness. And we're serving a God who's, who's faithful all the time, every day. He's always faithful. And if you're here tonight, I don't care what season your life may be in right now or what you may be going through, you can rest assured that God is going to be faithful and he's going to bring you out. He didn't start something that he can't finish. He's going to, he's going to finish it. He's going to bring you out of it. So worship tonight. Thou hast 
Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for a Lord that's always provided. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Amen. One more time, can we just lift our hands to him and let's just thank God for his provision. Let's thank God for his, his faithfulness. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to ask everyone to stand if you would. I give honor to my father and my parents for being here uh, this weekend, even though they're not here for me. But uh, they were here for those grandbabies, but I'll take it either way. And so thankful for them. Amen. But I'm ex I tell you what I'm excited about this evening, and that's hearing from the Word of God. I'm excited to hear what God has in store for us, and I'm excited who's going to deliver it tonight. So I'm going to ask Brother Riggs if he'd start making his way. Brother Riggs, a tremendous man, and he's going to bring the word tonight. Can you get behind him? Amen. Let's give the Lord and Brother Riggs a good hand as he makes his way. It feels good to be in God's house tonight. Amen. What a wonderful presence of the Lord that's here. Yeah, it feels... It just feels wonderful to be in God's presence. Well, I'm not going to try to pull a uh, brother, was it Terry Lee, fellowships with you for an hour and then preaches, you know. That's not what I was going to try to do tonight. Uh, but it feels good to be in God's house again tonight and to worship him. Amen. We're talking about old songs, new songs, and everything else. And Paul said, I'm, uh, I'm all, uh, all things to all men. So... I brought, uh, I've brought. i got my, my tablet with my scriptures on it. i got a phone with scriptures on it. And then I also got my hard copy over here, just in case I lose track of that. So if this power's down, I still have something to preach with. So I'm all things to all men. So amen. So it feel, uh, uh, being in God's house is amazing. It feels, uh, what a presence of the Lord we had this morning. My Lord. Awesome. And, uh, and uh, Moses preached to us this morning. Yeah. He said he felt like Moses. I said I told him I said it's kind of it's kind of hard to top Moses, you know, uh, a man that called uh, you know it just saw God face to face, you know, it was pretty amazing. Uh, but it's good to be. It is. It's awesome to be in God's presence. Thank God for Pastor Triplett for preaching to us this morning. My Lord, what a presence! What a what an awesome message that we heard this morning. Thirty nine years, thirty nine years we've been here, and it feels good. Uh, and, and continuing on and continuing on it, uh, what a way to end uh, uh, the service this, uh, this morning and tonight. Uh, I, I feel that God is moving us and, 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 and moving on my heart tonight. Yeah, he's giving me a message specifically for uh, tonight. And I, I, uh, it, just be, it, just, it just feels so good to be in his presence, to be in his presence. And I feel his presence here. I feel kind of like what the priests felt like when, uh, in, in the time of, of, of Solomon, uh, where they couldn't even stand to minister before the Lord because they felt God's presence. And tonight, wouldn't it be awesome to end 39 years uh, uh, and going into our 40th year to see someone get baptized in Jesus' name and someone receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? What a wonderful, wonderful time. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Acts. preaching about anniversary you want to go to the, the original the original uh, um, uh, the original church but uh, the book of Acts you know Pastor Triple said he felt like Moses and then I looked over Brother Trednell I said does that make you Aaron and he said he said oh yeah yeah he said I'm definitely Aaron and then uh, so then we have Joshua that's here and uh so, but uh, I feel more like, maybe feeling like the Apostle Paul tonight. So, uh, so here we go. Acts chapter number 18. And we'll read through these scriptures tonight. I just, I feel the Holy Ghost wanting to minister to someone tonight. I don't know how much preaching I'll do tonight, but I, I want to minister to someone tonight. I want, I want God to move on someone tonight. And I feel that he's wanting to speak to us tonight. Acts chapter number 18. Verse number one, after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. 
And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born of Pontius, lately, uh, lately came, uh, come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. And he came unto them, and because he was of the same craft, he, ab he abode th with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timaeus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I go unto the Gentiles. And he parted thence and entered into a certain man's house. Notice it said a certain man's house house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall sit on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. Amen. With the help of the Lord tonight, there's a, there's a uh, great Spanish term. Now, I was not very good in Spanish. I had probably maybe a C, maybe even a D. It was pretty bad. And I, I know certain words like taco and burrito and a few things like that. I'm more of a Taco Bell Spanish guy, you know. But there was a, and I hope I don't butcher this too much tonight, but there's a, when I went to El Salvador, we, uh, we went and visited someone, and they, they told us, they said, mi casa is su casa. I said, what in the world does that mean? They said, my house is your house. So that's what I'm going to preach tonight. God, I want to make my house your house. Amen. My house, I want my house. It's happening all over again. I'm telling you, there is something going on in the microphone. But I want my house to be his house. I want to be just like his house in every which way. Amen. Pastor Triplett, would you pray tonight over this message? You may be seated tonight. I'm just going to get comfortable. Making my house his house. And I want his house to be like my house. Paul was, a, when you think of the Apostle Paul, you think of one of the men that was amazing. He, he wrote most of the New Testament. He spoke uh, uh, with boldness probably more than any other apostle. But he was also considered the apostle to the Gentiles. And uh, not, never an apostle could reach the Gentile community like that of the apostle Paul. He had a Jewish heritage of that of the, of the Pharisee Sanhedrin. But he was also a Roman. He, uh, he had a Roman citizenship. And so he spoke uh, to the Gentiles as much as he did with the Greeks. And so Paul is uh, uh, coming into Corinth. And uh, look at our setting as... Uh, He's going to the church of Corinth. He's going to the uh, play, the city of Corinth, and uh, Corinth. Uh, as we we read a lot of, we get a lot of our scriptures and understanding of, of what God spoke to the churches in Corinth. Many times we've it's a very uh, very uh, familiar book. We like to read a lot, uh, but he's on his way to Corinth, and he has uh, uh, found himself uh, from people that were working with him. He was a tent maker by trade. And uh, so Paul has uh, found himself with some more tent makers, some more co-workers. Uh, so he identifies with that, and he goes to a certain uh, man's house that 
of, uh, uh, he goes to that of uh, Aquila's house and, uh, and his wife Priscilla, and he's identifying with them because they're tent makers. They work the same type of job, and he speaks, you know, kind of speaks the kind of same language with them. So uh, he's finding a place where he can uh, start beginning a ministry in Corinth and speaking to the, the area of Corinth, and he's trying to reach both Jews and Gentiles. He's, uh, he's trying to build a foundation uh, where he can reach uh, the city and uh, reach the people. And uh, he's coming with a different angle and, and trying to, uh, to just have his way uh, into the situation. So Paul is speaking, uh, and he goes to the synagogue. He's going there uh, regularly to the synagogue, and, and uh, every time that it opens and they're meeting, and he's, he's going there, and he's speaking to them, trying to befriend them, and he's uh, trying to, uh, what we would consider today is uh, trying to, try to reach the lost by connecting to them in some form or fashion. And so he, and here it is, the synagogue was, uh, they are, they're the Old Testament Jews, they believe uh, uh, in, in God, and, they, uh, and so he's trying to reach them and show them uh, in a way of Jesus Christ. So he's just speaking to them, he's just trying to relate to them and, and uh, get to know them, and he's uh, speaking in every which way to them. And so, uh, but finally Silas and Timaeus uh, show up from Macedonia, and then all of a sudden God, uh, God spins a move in Paul's spirit. And uh, it says in uh, uh, verse number 5, And when Silas and Timaeus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in his spirit. God began to move on his spirit. And it said, It's time for you to testify and take it a little bit deeper with them and speak to the people with a more of a boldness to them. He was pressed in his spirit and testified to, uh, to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And so Paul, at, at the beginning of his ministry, he's trying to relate to them. And we do, that. We do this with uh, people that we run into in contact with all the time. If we can make uh, some contact with people and speak to people, show that we're friendly, show that we're a friendly church, and that's what we should do. That's what Paul, Paul was doing. But here it is. We, we do that. We need to show that we're a friendly church. We need to show that we, uh, uh, that we, we care. They need to see Jesus from, uh, from us in a point of view. But then there comes a time when the Spirit moves and Paul was moved in the spirit to speak now that you now I've got to speak doctrine to you. I've got to speak that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was the Christ. He was the anointed one. Uh, uh, he said, we've got common ground. We believe in the, the scriptures. We believe in the Old Testament scriptures. We believe in the Septuagint that we, we read of the Old Testament. We, we understand with the laws and the prophets. And he's building common, uh, common favor with them. But now God said, hey, now you really got to preach. Uh, you got to speak the word now, Paul. And you got to speak to the people the doctrine and what's real and what's not real. And, and uh, you're relating to them, and that's great. But now you've got to take it a step farther, and you've got to preach. You got to preach me to them. You got to preach my name. Uh, you got to preach uh, that I am the Christ, the Anointed One. I'm the one that they were looking for, and uh, I've, I've been crucified. Uh, that uh, that uh, that Jesus was crucified, and and uh, and and they uh, they, uh, they 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 crucified him now. And then, and now, Paul, you've got to preach uh, the truth to them. You got to preach uh, what you know. It's good to try to relate to uh, common ground uh, but now you've got to really show them they got to get to heaven somehow they've got to know who I am and they got to be identified with the name there are people that we will run in contact with uh, and they will be great uh, they will be great contacts and they would love to hear what we hear they love to just to relate to uh, relate to you they uh, they may talk about your job and uh, and uh, they may talk about uh, great things uh, with them and, and you and you may relate to them a little bit find some common ground maybe they do believe in a, a few scriptures here and there and, and maybe they find them identify as Christians uh, and uh, that's great and all but somewhere along the line you got to preach the truth to them you've got to get to the meeting potatoes uh, you got to get to the things that what's really going to save them from hell and so that's what God is speaking to Paul he said Paul preach to them about me preach my name you see, see Paul it's easy to talk with scriptures and things and relate but when it comes to it the scripture says we're going to be persecuted for his name's sake he said Paul Tell them you're a person of the name. Help them realize uh, that you are been identified with me now, Paul. You're identified. See, there's many people that will be along with you for a, a quite some time until you start preaching the truth. <laughs> 
And then when you start preaching the truth, things change. And that's what happened with these Jews that were here that day. Paul was preaching to them. He was trying to relate to them. And finally, God moved on his spirit. He said, you got to preach that I'm the Christ. I'm the anointed one that they've been seeking after and they're missing. Preach to who I am. Preach my name. Preach the doctrine. Preach the truth to them. And now, reach to them. And so Paul preached the truth to them. He spoke to them with boldness to them. He spoke about when he was led in the Spirit. He spoke about them as him being the Christ, the anointed one. He's Jesus. He's the one that will save them from their sins and and blot out their uh, uh, transgressions. He was the one that's there for them. He's the one that bled and died for them and applied his blood to them. And see, now this is where the rubber really meets the road. Because now, when Paul spoke to them, they began to, they began to blaspheme and they began to turn Paul away. They liked you whenever you were talking nice to them, Paul, and speaking great things on common ground. But when you begin to uh, move a little bit and convict them and prick them in their hearts and things, they don't like you anymore. They will not, they, 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 they've persuaded a different direction. We will run into those kind of situations where we try to reach people, but keep preaching the truth anyhow. Preach it in love. Preach it every which way you can. But don't stop preaching the truth. Don't compromise the truth now. Don't let go of the truth now. Because we live in an hour and a time right now where we're going to be persecuted. Not because of what we think about certain things. Not because of what our occupation we have. But we're going to be persecuted for his name's sake. You can talk about God. You can talk about other things. You can talk about everything you want to. But you start mentioning the name of Jesus, and you'll start seeing a cringe the other direction. God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, go preach to them. He said, oh, by the way, they're not going to listen to you. How would you like to be that? God called me. <laughs> Can you see that, Jeremiah? We think of well, Jeremiah is one of the greatest prophets you ever thought of. And God speaks to him. He said, go preach, Jeremiah. Go speak to him. He goes, go preach. Uh, cry your heart out. Give everything you can. Oh, by the way, they're still not going to listen to you. That's kind of defeating. He said, but you know what God did? He said, I want them without excuse. They can't say they didn't have a man of God that preached the truth to them. They can't say they didn't have someone that preached the word to them. Let me tell you, when it's said and done, the word of God is what's going to make it. The word of God is going to be there in the time of the end. It's the word of God. The flower fadeth, the grass withereth, but the words of our God will last forever. You got to preach truth. You got to preach truth. It matters what truth is. It matters what it is. And so Paul's preaching to them. He preached Jesus. He's the Christ. He's the anointed one. It's his name that you've got to be identified with. And then he said they were opposed to themselves. And they blasphemed. And Paul, he looked at them. He shook his raiment. And he said to them, your blood be upon your own heads. He said, I'm clean from henceforth, and I will go into the Gentiles. He said, I've done everything I can. I preach to you in every which way. You know, there's a lot of times you look at Apostle Paul and sometimes, you know, Paul's a little hard-headed. You know, Paul, Paul you know, eventually, you know, it, it, sometimes he's hard to deal with. That's, um, ask Barnabas. Ask Barnabas because they talked about John Mark. And here it is, uh, Paul saw a different way and then Barnabas saw a different way and they split and they went different directions. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes Paul is hard to deal with. I got a spirit of Pastor Triplet up here. <laughs> I keep hitting that mute button. So Paul is preaching. He's speaking to them. He's giving his all, his all to them. He's preaching Christ to them. And then they, they leave. And so Paul's frustrated. He leaves. And notice the first time Paul approaches the city and, and he's going in and he and he goes into uh, uh, he goes into uh, uh, Aquila and and and. and Priscilla's house and, and, he, and he finds a place because there were tent makers. He just find a place where he could just start identifying with. But see now Paul leaves after he was pressed and after they left Paul goes a different direction. He says I'm going to the Gentiles now. If you don't receive it I can't do nothing else with it. I'm going to go on and I'm going to find somebody that's going to reach out. 
this ain't nothing new. Jesus said the same thing. He said, if these don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. So guess what? I don't want a rock taking my place. I don't want a, I want a rock or a stone taking my place of worship and praise. I want God to know that I love him and I praise him and I worship him because I want his house to be like my house. I want my house to be like his house. I want to be identified with him in every aspect. So i got to continue on to get through this tonight. But, but Paul, he's, at first he goes through and he, and he it just tries to find a place to stay, try to get into the, into the city. But now he's going with a more specific plan. Because of this, it was, and, it, and you know it's got to hurt Paul because he was a Jew and he's trying to reach to them. And they, did, and they pushed him away and they, and, they, and they blasted him. So he went to a different direction. And so now he says, I've got to be a little bit more, uh, uh, i got to go into this a little bit at a different angle. I went into this and tried to open up doors. I tried to be friendly. I tried to do everything I can. And then when I got a chance to preach Jesus, they pushed me out. And so they said he departed thence. Then he entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God. His whole house joined hard to the synagogue. Lord, help me. And so, I just feel like how Pastor Triple said this morning, I'm glad where this thing goes, you know. So we see that Paul reached to a certain point. He goes, and he, he goes at an angle, and he just, at uh, first, but then now he goes to a specific angle. He comes, and he departed this, and he entered to a certain man's house. The Bible says he was a certain man. Why? Because God's got a certain plan for you. This time, he didn't look just for another tent maker. He didn't look for just another co-worker. He was on a mission from a different direction. Now, Paul is looking for a worshiper. He went to Justice's house, and it says it was right next to the house of God. It was joined to the house of God. And it said he was a worshiper. A worshiper, one that worshiped God. There was nothing specific. It didn't say go through all this, the different details. It didn't have a, a, a lot of different things to this house. It just said he went to Justice's house, and he was a worshiper. He was a worshiper of God. Paul said, if I'm going to go this, and I'm going to reach the people in a new, different direction, then I'm going to have to go to a place of worship. If I'm going to go to God's house this time, I can't do it nonchalant. I can't do it in a certain direction. I can't just go and just try to make friends. I've got to go with a purpose, and the purpose is, is I've got to find somebody that's put their house, joined to the house of God, and is a place of worship. I'm looking myself up to another worshiper. I'm going to link myself to another praiser. I'm going to get myself a hold of somebody beside me that knows how to worship. When we come to the house of God, you need to find somebody that's worshiping. You need to get beside somebody that's praising and worshiping God. That's where we got to have in this hour. We got to have worshipers. We've got to have praisers. Every time we go into battle, there's got to be worship in the beginning. Every time Israel fought a battle, they sent Judah in first. The praise had to go for on the front lines. In order for us to win a battle in this hour and get a hold of God in the spiritual warfare that we're fighting, we got to get our house next to his house. Our house has got to be like his house. we got to be identified with Jesus in worship. Maybe you don't feel like worshiping. Then get beside somebody that knows how to worship. Maybe I don't feel like it tonight. Well, guess what? God said first and foremost, you got to send worship in first. We want God to move. Then we got to show worship first. We got to praise God first. We got to give God everything first. Jay Paul said, if I'm going to begin this whole ministry, I've got to get it on the right foot. I didn't start out the right direction this time, but this time I am. I'm going to find myself. He wasn't, I'm not looking for the flashiest house. I'm not looking for the nicest house. I'm looking for the worshiping house. God, make my house a place of worship and put me right beside the house of God and everything that I do. God, let me worship you in my house and in your house. Get me close to you, God. Yeah. 
Pastor Tripp was talking about Moses this morning. God chose Joshua, the son of Nun, to succeed him. You know why God chose Joshua? Because Joshua lingered in the house of God. He lived in the house of God. A long time after Moses left, Joshua just lingered. He was in the house of God, lingered in the house of God, spent his time in the house of God. He literally spent every moment he can in God's house because he just wanted to spend that time in God's presence. Let me tell you, notice this man, Justice, put his house literally joined to the house of God. Now, I know we can't literally put our house right next to the house of God, but one thing we can do, we can in a spiritual tense because justice was a worshiper of God. And in order for us to have a move of God, we got to put our house in a worshiping house of God. I want my house to be like his house. I want my house to be what his house was. I want God, my casa, to be like his casa. I want my house to be like his house. I want to live my life close to his presence. I want to live my life close to his house and everything that I do. And so he sent his house, put his justice, his justice, his house was joined, was connected. If we're going to have revival, and this is the 39 years that we have spent worshiping God in this house, what I'm going to tell you is that for another 39 years, let's put our house next to his house. Let's put our place of worship next to his house. Let's worship God in our houses like we do in his house. Let's praise God in his house, and let's do it in our house too. We're not going to have revival unless we're having revival in the house too. we got to have it in the church house, and we got to have it in your house. We got to have revival. We need a revival. We need revival in the house and the homes. A church is built upon people. Okay. So we got to have his house like our house. Going, looking back at what we were talking about in the synagogue, and the Jews were there every day. They had the, they had the house every day. So in order for our house to be like his house, there's one thing that's got to happen. This is going to be deep, real deep here, okay? His house has got to be like his house. Look at you. Got it? His house is going to be like his house. There's a lot of people that say they're the house of God, and they, and, they, and they tell you that they're a church, and they're built upon the church. But let me tell you, if it's not built upon the book of Jesus Christ, if it's not built upon the holy word of scriptures, it's not his house. That's why I'm glad I call myself apostolic because we're built upon the original. We're built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Him being the chief cornerstone upon the apostles and the prophets. That's the way his house is built and that's the way this house is built. And that's the way your house has to be built. I want my house to be like his house. I want my home to be like his home. I want to fall in love in his presence and worship God in his presence. You gotta have it both. You gotta worship God in His house, and you gotta worship God in your house. There's a lot of times that people want to worship God in His house, but they don't want to worship God in their house. And then there's times you want to worship God in your house, then you don't want to worship God in His house. You've got to have the fellowship with your brothers and your sisters, and you've got to have the fellowship in your home. You've got to have it in this hour, or you're not going to make it. Because let me tell you, the world is looking for a house they can destroy. His house, he said, upon this rock, Peter, I'm going to build my church. He said, my church has got a sure foundation. It's built upon the rock of Jesus Christ. That church, that's what you got to build on. But he also said, you need to build your house on the rock. Because if you build it on the sand, great will be the fall thereof. So if your his house is built on a rock, then your house has got to be built on a rock. And we got to go to heaven together, folks. Gotta go on. I'm almost done. I promise. I promise. I know that sometimes don't mean nothing. You hear a preacher say that. It's just to make them feel better. Like, hey, I'm getting through this. Okay. So anyway, God's speaking. He said, "You got to make your house." I feel like uh, you know. Here it is. That justice made his house join to the house of God. He made his house like God's house. He worshipped him right there. He said, "I want to be so close to the house of God. I want to be so close to His presence." 
And Paul said, I like that because that's what I want to be like. I want to be around somebody that wants to be close to the presence of God. And that's what we got to have in this hour. And then, that was justice. He's a great saint. Worship with God. And that's, and that's what you got to have. We need saints to worship God. We need Holy Ghost filled saints to know how to worship. Amen? We do. But guess what we also need? And it says in Christmas, the chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the Lord with all his house. We got to have saints that know how to worship and praise God and get connected to the house of God. But we also need preachers that know how to preach the word of God and that are connected to his house. Connected to God's house in every way. Know how to worship. Know how to praise. Know how to lift to God. But he said he worshiped God with all of his house. God, I want to worship you with everything in me. I want to worship you with everything I got. I want to give you everything. God, let me preach your word. Let me preach it with boldness and strength because that's how your house is designed. Going on. He speaks to them. And it said in Christmas, chief ruler of the center of God believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. I thank God that we baptized I don't know how many. It looked awesome seeing a whole lot of people going here and down in the water. I mean, I, I, my mind just thought about I wonder if this is what like John the Baptist was, you know, with all those people just coming and he's just baptizing them. And so I thank God for it. Many Corinthians were baptized. And that's what we got to have. We got to have people getting baptized. Because if they're not getting baptized in the name, then what kind of a house do we have? we got to have faith in every service that there's water in that tank and come and get baptized in Jesus' name. That was awesome. We, was, was it last week? I think it was. We, we, we didn't know that was going to happen. We didn't know it was going to happen, but there was two like, yeah, we want to be baptized. we got to come expecting it in every service, every single time. they got to be baptized. That's what we got to have. That's what his house is. We're buried with him in baptism. That's what his house is. And that's what I want, our, I want my house to be like. That's what I want your house to be like and a place that there's revival. And going on, he spake unto the Lord, and, it's, and he said, he spake, then spake the, the Lord to Paul and to my, by vision. And see, here it is. Everything had to be said. Before Paul could ever get the vision, he had to find his place in the presence of God. He had to find his place in the house of God. He had to find a place of worship and praise in order for God to really show the vision. And then he speaks this. He says, Jesus speaks to him. He says, be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee. And no man shall sit on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. First things, be not afraid. Paul, don't fear the enemy. Don't feel what's hap- Don't fear what's happening to you, Paul. I know the Jews have talked about getting a hold of you and killing you and destroying you, but I'm telling you right now, be not afraid, Paul, because guess what? I'm with you. I'm beside you, and if God be for us, who can be against us? I'm in the hour when God is with us, and God is in the apostolic church right now. God is in the apostolic church in this hour, and if God be for us, who can be against us? He said, be not afraid of them, Paul. I don't care what the enemy's pushed in your life. I don't care what the devil has put in your life. I don't care what you had to face at the doctor's office. I don't care what you had to face in front of you. God is still the end of it all. And when God is with you, there ain't nothing that can stop it. There's nothing that can stop it. you got to believe by faith that God's going to bring you through it, that God's going to bring you out of it, because if God be with you, who can be against you? To be not afraid. He said, but speak. He said, you got to speak up, Paul. You got to speak, and you got to speak with boldness, just like it was on Pentecost. He said, they spoke with boldness. He said, Paul, you got to speak. You got to let your voice be heard. Let me tell you, and if you, if in any hour, in a time, in space, and anything else, this is the hour where the church can't be silent. 
We can't, we can't media grow everything. We can't put everything to the side. We can't sit back and stick our head in the sand anymore. It's time for the church to rise up and speak the word of God in the hour that we live in. I don't care how many things come our way, how many wars and rumors of wars, how many other things that the enemy puts in our life, how much ungodliness that we see out there. It's time for the church to speak in an hour, and that time is now. Let your voice be heard. Speak the word of God with boldness. Don't hold back now. Hold not your peace. He said, Paul, hold not your peace. Hold not. Don't let back now. He said, because I have much people in this city. I have people in this city that you don't know not, know not of. And the NLT, the scripture says, is in that verse right there at the end of that, it says, I have many people that belong to me. He said, Paul, when you don't speak, you lose what belongs to me. When you don't let your voice be heard and you don't preach the word of God with boldness that I've given you, you let somebody's soul be lost out there. He said, don't let it happen, Paul. Speak the word. Oh, God, I don't ever forget. I don't ever get to a point when there's a lost soul that's out there and I'm too afraid to speak the word of God with boldness and strength and say, you got to get to heaven somehow. you got to make it somehow. He said, speak, Paul. I have many people that belong to me in this city. And I'm closing with this. Let's stand. I have many people that belong to me. Pastor Trippett speak this morning about Moses and his final moments and what he saw in the promised land. And they gave it to Joshua. And you know what Joshua did? Let's look at Joshua's last moments. He spoke in Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. Go to spoke to him. He said, you're stricken in years and you're old now, Joshua. He said, but guess what? There's more land to conquer. There's very much more land. There's very much more. You haven't even scratched the surface yet. You haven't even moved before the surface of it yet. There's more land that needs to be possessed. I've got much more for you and for your homes and everything else. You've got more work to be done. You got more work to get done. I don't care how many years you've been in this. I don't care how many year, how old you are, how young you are. It doesn't matter. It's just a number. But one thing is for sure is that you've got to preach and you've got to speak. No, if you've got a voice in your body, you've got a voice that needs to be heard. Speak. My house has to be your his house, and here's where I'm getting to tonight. Closing this out. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and this is where I'm closing. I promise I'm done at this of these scriptures. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 19 and 20. Paul speaks. This is Corinth, this is Corinth again. This is the church in Corinth. This is what he started. This is the whole process he did. And now he's speaking to them in a letter. What? Know ye not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. You're not your own. You belong to to God. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost or it is the temple of God? Because the Holy Ghost is God. We know that. It's the temple of His Spirit. And it's dwelling in you. It's, it's a place where He wants to dwell. He said, know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. It's a temple made without hands. It's the temple that God has tuned to dwell. In the Old Testament, they had the tabernacle. They had the temple. But in the New Testament, he said, I'm going to write them on your heart. I'm going to place them inside your body. And your body is now my church. This church is not the building. We, we, Pastor Bill has preached that many times. It's just a barn we come into. It's not, the church is not the building. This church has been here th 39 years. 
But we've moved from different parts of the building and we've moved to different things. Because the church is not the building. The church is the body. We are the body of Christ. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. I want my house, my temple, to be like his house. I want my body to be like his house. I want my house, my house right here that's holding his spirit. I want it to be like his house. For you are bought with a price. The book of Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. He purchased the church with his own blood. He purchased us. We belong to him. He purchased us. God said, I bought you with a price. I gave my blood for you. I died for you because I love you. And the only thing I want you to do is speak. I gave you power, the Holy Ghost, to be witnesses to me. To share what you know because there is a person under an underpass somewhere that needs you. There's a person on your job that is struggling and is hurting that needs the Holy Ghost. Needs to see his house. And the only place they're going to see his house is in your house. In this temple. Jesus spoke and talked about the temple. He said, he told the Pharisees, you destroy this temple and I will raise it up. And they thought he was crazy. But he was speaking of his body. Because he was changing from that old temple that you could not come into his presence with. To a temple where his presence can dwell inside of you. He went from you approaching him, from him coming to you. Because he wants to dwell in your temple. He wants to dwell in your house. Will you let him dwell in your house? Will you dwell in, will you let him? Will you let him? For you're bought with a price. Wherefore glory God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You see, you're not your own. Don't be depressed when the enemy puts you down and say you're nothing and you're a nobody. Guess what? He's a wrong because he's he's touching the temple of God. He's touching the body of God because you're created in his image. It wasn't God's always plan to dwell in a tabernacle, in a tent, in a temple. That wasn't what God's plan from the very beginning. He made man in his image. It was all about the body he made. He crafted it, and he breathed into it the breath of life. And so likewise, he also breathed his spirit in you. And he said, I want you to reach. And I want you to reach out for some other soul. Would you find a place around this altar if you'd like to come? I want my house to be his house. I want my temple to be his temple. I want my body to be his body. I want to be the part of his body. I want to reach where he's reaching. I want to walk where he's walking because there's a soul that matters. 39 years we have been here, but it's not just been a building uh, that we've looked towards because every time we see the pictures and everything else, it's the body, it's the people that we've been with. This is the temple. 39 years and it's been about the person. Thank God we can come to a building to worship, but the real temple's right here. The real temple's right here. God, let me play. No, you're not. Don't you understand that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? God desired for you from the very beginning because he made you in his image. And when the enemy places you and puts you down, realize he's trying to put the image of God down. It's not you that he's after, it's God he's after. Because you're in his image. He loves you so much, he frames you the way his image is. In his image. He made us. God I want my house to be your house. Come on, let's make his house his house right now. Let's make his house my house. God, I want my house to be your house. I want my house to be your house. And I want your house to be my house. I don't want to be a difference. I want to know that everything you do, I want to do as well. I want to walk by your spirit. It is this. This is his spirit. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
It's a temple of the Spirit. God, make me. Come on, church, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. love him right now. God, I want your house to be my house. I want your house to be my house, God. God, I want your spirit, God. I want to show forth like it's in your church. Because this is the church. We are the body. This is the church. Yes, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Look where you take it. Watch where you go with it. Because his house is your house. and worship it magnifies and glorifies his name sing Sometimes people are plagued with, with thoughts uh, in a, of inadequacy and, and trouble and so on. But ladies and gentlemen, if you'll fill your house with good thoughts about the Lord Jesus, he's never failed you. If you'll start quoting his scripture and talking about his goodness, and just all of that will just chase away all of those, those ill feelings from, from the enemy. Fill your house with the glory of God. Read the word of God. Praise God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Hallelujah. If you'll fill your house with the word of God, praise God, he'll put a smile on your face and a spring in your step. Chase away those wicked thoughts and evil things that want to plague you. Ladies and gentlemen, what a message we've heard tonight. I want my house to be built right next door to the house of God. Praise God. Amen. I want to I want to live in Clinton. <laughs> I want to I want to be close to the house of God. Amen. Would you lift your hands tonight? Let's love the Lord and worship him and thank him for what we've heard, God. Hallelujah. I want to be close to you, Lord. I want to be right next door so that when I call, you're not far away. Hallelujah. I want to be near to you, Jesus. I want my voice to be heard. Praise God. Don't let it be far from my house to your house. Lord, now as we leave tonight, bless us. Hallelujah. Lord, draw us close to your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, fill us with that power of God. Keep us close to you. Fill us with your joy and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.